We're going to talk about the new location-based game uh, Pokemon Go. Like in the old Pokemon games, you walk around and you collect Pokemons. But the new thing is that this time you're not walking around on your Game Boy in your, in your virtual game space, but this time you're actually walking around the city and you collect Pokemons wherever they appear in the city. First, you download the app from the iPhone store or the Android store. So we have a couple of streets here. You need to be outside because the game uses GPS to track your position. So this is us. And we actually physically walk around the city with our phones in our hand. And then hopefully, suddenly a Pokemon appears. And then when we're there, we see the Pokemon on our screen. It switches to like a very simple augmented reality view with your camera. And then we use the Pokeballs and do a, a very simple flicking game. So I have, a, I have a Pokeball here and then I have to try to throw it at the Pokemon. And if it works, the Pokemon is captured by the ball and then goes into my, my backpack or as it's called in Pokemon lingo, my Pokedex. So we're here at the university and over here is a, a Pokestop. And if we do this, we get bonus items that we need. And there's also a Pokemon next to it. Uh, let's see if it works. I've hit it, but now it might escape. So we need to wait a few seconds. It has escaped, so let's try again. So what yeah, my, the, my balls, the balls sort of stick to them, do they? Yeah, I need, to, I, need to, I need to hit the Pokemon with the ball by flicking it in this direction. And I'm, my aim is very, very bad at the moment. Yeah, so I've hit it now. It goes into the ball. And depending on the strength of the Pokemon and my level, and the quality of Pokeball I've used, it might or might not escape. Yeah. Gotcha. Psyduck was caught. So I got experience points for it and Stardust and Candy. Do you already have that one? I already had that one, yes. So it doesn't matter that we're a little bit away from that particular... No, because, because uh, GPS is very imprecise anyways. It works really well when you're driving on a street because then the phone knows that you are on a street. So it will fudge the results a bit and actually put you on the street. But if you were just walking around then the GPS will jump around a little bit. At some point I will run out of these Pokeballs because I only have a limited amount of them. So what Niantic has also done is they placed uh, so-called Pokestops in the environment. And I can see them on the map that I have. And then if I walk to these Pokestops, I get bonus items, Pokeballs, etc. So I can refresh my energy, basically. And then there is a, another type of location, so-called gyms. Now when I walk to a gym, I can place one of my Pokemons inside this gym and then the Pokemon is protecting the gym and I can leave the spot again, I can walk around further, collect other Pokemons, train these Pokemons and then if another player comes to the gym, they can fight against my Pokemon that is protecting uh, the gym. So the gyms are a bit like a boxing gym rather than kind of a workout gym, is that right? Yeah, they, they actually look very much like a, like a boxing ring. So you have like a platform and then you, have, you can see the two Pokemons fighting against each other. Each Pokemon is using their, their special abilities. There are about 750 different Pokemons in this game, I, be, I believe. And in the, in the overall Pokemon world, there are, there are plenty more. So I'm, I'm sure Niantic and Nintendo will release a couple of more as soon as everybody has found all the Pokemons. Because that's what, what the game is basically about, to, to catch them all, to, to complete your Pokedex, then to train your Pokemon, make them better, and gain prestige by, by owning these gyms. So the tagline, gotta catch them all, it's not about getting every single one, it's about getting the different types, is it? Yes, yeah, they're, as, as I said, there are like 750 different ones, I believe, and if you, if you find the same one again, you do get some, some bonus experience points and some, some stardust and candy and all these kind of things but then you can exchange them for, for more uh, bonus items, etc. So you, you want to have like one really strong Pokemon of every type. Who's making the money out of this? <laughs> What's going on with the money? Yeah, that's an, that's an interesting question. Uh, many people asked that already when Niantic was doing Ingress, which is the, the, the predecessor. Uh, in Pokemon, you have the, the freemium uh, model. So instead of, instead of walking to the Pokestops and collecting new Pokeballs, I can also be lazy and just pay, pay money and then, then get these items. So that's one, one business model. And the other interesting thing is by um, following the people around the city and observing how they move, where they go, where they congregate, etc. Niantic also learns a lot about the structure of the city, about uh, people's movement, etc. 
And so that's potentially very interesting data to analyze and then uh, use in other ways than just gaming. Maybe some kind of data harvesting going on, is that right? Possibly. Well, they, they, they need to do some data harvesting anyways, because that's what, they are, what their game is all about. To send people into, into unexplored environments, for example. That, that's also one of the, the fascinations that, that the Pokemon Go game has. That You see that there's a Pokestop somewhere, and that's why you go there and you go to an area of the city that you haven't been before. And so you, so you explore the city, you learn, you, you see the city with new eyes, in a way. So you're doing sightseeing in your, in your hometown, which is something you often don't actually do. Do you think that the people who are playing this game are actually seeing any of the sights, or are they just staring at their phones? Well, that, that's, that's something I've, I have noticed when, I, when I'm playing the game. And for example, here at the Market Square, there's often a big congregation of people playing the game. And yes, people, people look at their phones, and they look at the map so they, they can see where the poker stops are, etc. And they, they focus very much on the map. They catch the Pokemons with the augmented reality view. They do the flicking game, etc. And sometimes they seem to be a bit remote from the, from the actual environment. And that's something that we in research have tried to, to investigate. Like what makes these games exciting? How much coupling between the real world and the virtual game space do you want to have? How does it change the, the game experience? Because what uh, Niantic is doing is they have a, a big database of all these landmarks where they place the Pokestops and the gyms, etc. And so all of these locations are at interesting places. But then again, there's no strong connection between the game content and the actual location. Because if I go to this Pokestop or to this Pokestop, that doesn't have any different meaning. Another interesting question is, is in a way, a legal question or an ethical question because um, you're placing all these virtual objects into the real world, into the, into the cyberspace, so to say. So who owns the cyberspace of your location? If I, if, I have a, if I live in my flat and then, because of how the game is set up, a Pikachu appears in my back garden that will potentially attract other players and they might then feel enticed to climb into my back garden. And they don't necessarily will feel that it's something illegal they're doing because the game kind of tells them there's a Pikachu, come here, pick up the Pikachu. And then it becomes an interesting question, what happens if there's an accident, for example, while they're trespassing? Uh, other cases that have been in the media are locations that don't really want Pokemon to appear there. For example, the Holocaust Museum in New York or uh, Auschwitz uh, cemeteries in general. So suddenly you have people running around a cemetery holding up their phones onto, onto graveyards. So it's an interesting social and ethical uh, question that you have to ask yourself when you're designing these games and when you add content uh, to these games. Why does that happen on those particular places? What, what's causing those to become hotspots? Yeah, because um, Niantic is using a, a very simple trick, so to say, to create all the content. So they haven't gone and opened Google Maps and placed a Pokestop here, another Pokestop here, and here should be a Pokestop. So they have a, they have a big database of uh, locations, which they have increased by, by the previous game, Ingress. And so now they have a, have a giant database of landmarks, of monuments, of schools, universities, statues, etc. And all of these locations are chosen for the game and then auto-generated as uh, Pokestops and gyms. So there's no uh, moderation process in there at the moment. You must immediately get dang This has been made in Sheffield. It's a kind of drunk jelly babies fighting in a car park physics brawler uh, game, a company called Boneloaf. This particular server has four Titan X graphics cards in it. A Titan X is one of the foremost graphics cards. There are new generation 